Praise the Lord. Jesus is the way and the truth hunger. It might appear like the problem on the right is more because sorry, it's just gone offline here. Because do you know the way they say when something something has to get worse before it gets better? Well, the body has a way of adapting. It has a way of adapting to a postural dysfunction. And so the weight has to be uh, lifted up by something. It has to be managed, distribution of weight. So muscles can only pull. So if there's one pulling this side to an inordinate extent compared to the other, then what you're going to get is a tilt. Okay? So it makes sense that something might appear to get worse before it gets better. But ultimately that, even though something's getting better, as you improve, other things or other areas that need work are come to the fore and become visible. And so you realize the pain I had or the symptom I had was only really the result of a, of a deeper root problem. Though it was the problem that presented to me. Now the world can exploit this. They can exploit that your limited knowledge of the area that they know well, say in this case musculoskeletal system, limits you, gives you a limited cap capacity to interpret what's occurring to you even in, in your own body. So that they fashion weapons against you relying upon your ignorance and therefore it becomes they're incentivized to keep you ignorant and this is why they attack the education institutions academies and universities what do i mean by attack i mean by limit give limited access to those who they feel they can control or are corrupt or who are already corrupted and in their control and under their command etc corrupt the syllabus, teach lies, limit the understanding in the syllabus until one gets to a higher level of education and then give full understanding, knowing that the person that reached a higher level, level of education will have longer in the system and they can wear at them longer with their tactics to try and break them down before they reach that level of education, where they have a holistic view. But even today, there are doctors who don't have an holistic view of the human body and how it operates as a whole together, one system impacting the other. And if they do know, well, then they're probably a Jesuit or have been led to serve the uh, synagogue of Satan. So I'm giving you a perf uh, uh, an example. I'm seeing benefits. I'm hearing benefits. I can feel the air and the resonance more in my head which means the air is better, probably better accessing my headspace. I can feel the vibration. It's a new sensation. I haven't felt it in a long time. Where I can feel um, improved head resonance. Mm -hmm. If you do that. Mm -hmm. See the way things are more free up there and the, the, vo the vocal cords are oscillating more freely and vibrating more freely? Well, that means that the pressure has been to some extent taken off of the vocal cords and they can operate and function and articulate more accurately and more freely, independent of one another. Whereas before it was like a kink in the hose pipe where pressure would build up at that bend. And then if it did make it through the bend, by the time it came out, it was coming out so hard and fast that it was almost, it, it's sort of uncontrollable at least in terms of the mechanisms of the, of the vocal cords. And it's very similar because air is a fluid. So sound is a vibration. And so too is um, sound is a vibration, which is a, a form of flow. And so too is the flow of air as you exhale, because it's, it's the movement or the passage of air through a limited space under compression or under pressure. You see? So it's a, it's a similar, that's why I use that analogy. It's like a kink in the hose pipe. Okay. So if you are seeing a benefit, but it appears like there's a worsening effect, 
in the in the straightness of your neck or this exposes the root of the problem this is telling you where the root is the root is <clears throat> see where that changes the sound of your voice when you dip your chin the root is the root is the root is see the way it gets more heady the more forward i come because i still have a degree of forward head posture at least that certain muscles of my neck are stronger than other muscles of my neck which means that when i come into that position there it, they might actually be pressing up against those muscles and ca causing a constriction. So I might have some overdeveloped muscles in the chain, which by nature of their over overdevelopment are causing a constriction in the proper function. So it's like, you know, a boxer who gets good at taking punches. He, ha he hasn't really gotten good at fighting. He's just managed to take more punches off more heavyweights. So he's conditioned his body to be hit, which he gives the appearance of going rounds with fighters who've actually learned to fight. So we can do things whereby it appears that we're getting better at doing something, but actually what's happening is we're just getting better at taking hits, but not getting better at maneuvering rightly. Now, of course, we have to take hits. You can't avoid taking hits. But it's better to maneuver intelligently, even within a temporarily limited framework or area of movement, because you're beginning to train properly or retrain the proper function of the mechanism while you're working on the other issues. Because as you learn to correct your posture, it calls the muscles... See the way I have to, yeah. You see that the way that adjustment I did there, my shoulders and now my neck appears straighter. It's visible on camera. That's because muscles in my upper body, my upper shoulders here, and in my neck are out of alignment or out of balance, and that's going to take time. So things like maybe the farmer's walk, with equal weight. See the see what the farmer's walk does is pulls my shoulders down towards the ground. And I know that the weight being lifted in both sides of my body are the same weight. So there's an equal amount of pressure either side or weight distribution, which means the only thing I have to think about then is keeping my posture right, my posture as straight as I can, to the best of my ability. And then over time, you hope that the weight you're bearing as you walk would keep your shoulders at a sufficiently long, because you want your muscles not only to be strong, but you want them to be long, strong and long, okay? Because um, you'll have the muscles of, of the shoulders then will be more flexible, which means you'll bear weight better, and it allows for the release of something that was otherwise under an excessive amount of tension and so causing a spasming or a contraction to remain and not release you see so if muscles can only pull and I've got a tension on this side it's going to pull everything towards so be the other side pull, pull everything towards where the problem is so if my head is tilting that way it's probably because there's a problem that way on that side which implies what a shortening now, look at what I was doing. I was playing guitar. What does that cause me to do? Well, me, specifically because I was only ever really trained or self-taught to accompany myself singing. And I learned then to look at my hand. So that was a bad habit to get into and then therefore compound by continuing to do so. And so this is why you see the classical, classically trained musicians and their postures, you might say, why does he sit that way? Why does the guitarist sit that way with one foot up on the thing? And because if you notice, it, it enables him to have, have the guitar head closer to him and the fretboard is at a specific angle where he can now freely observe his instrument and his posture and his hand and stuff without actually you know, having any of these postural dysfunctions build over time. 
so that the classical posture is one that is uh, promoting good posture or the classical positioning rather is promoting good posture in the body when you put the guitar over here now you see that now I want to look at my hand my head is over there what's going to happen well if I'm learning because naturally the, the guitar is heavier on this side so it's going to tilt that way but this doesn't just apply to guitar playing I'm just I'm just relaying to you what I've been through that has probably led to this. You might be doing something else that is leading to a problem in your physiology that because it took so long for it to form, it might not be obvious to you exactly how it formed or what you were doing that led to its formation, this postural dysfunction. But I'm just giving you examples so that you can begin to look at your own body in that way. And if you can look at your physical body in that way, can you slide that knowledge and that awareness over to your spiritual walk? So the, naturally this side of the guitar is heavier. It's rounded, which means it'll probably slip as well easily. It'll turn the corner easily because it's rounded down there. So now it's tending to be up here as well because the headstock is lighter. And you probably, we probably tend, we do, when you, put, when you go to pick up a glass or a cup to drink, you tend to bring your head towards the towards the, especially if it's full, because you want to get to it quickly before it spills. But if you're to be in the proper posture, you'll bring the cup to your face and drink, right? Rather than, you see? Because that's forward head posture, okay? So if you're doing things properly, you lift it up, and you drink from the cup, you put it down, and you'll remain in good posture. So you might think, what's the big deal? That's only once. But if you're doing that every time you're taking a drink out of a cup, you're training bad posture. Okay? It becomes a regular occurrence. So use it or lose it. Look at the opposite of that. Whatever you're using, you'll keep. So if you're regularly keeping bad posture, you're going to continue to keep it. You're training it. So you have to begin by not doing it anymore. Then, once you've, trained, once you've trained the behavior, you can think about correcting the problems that have arrived or arised as a result of that bad, bad behavior. And that can take time. Okay. And then once it starts to improve, work within the confines of that improvement and be gentle with yourself in that new freedom of movement because your the muscles might be weak in that posture or they might be strong excessively because you are pushing against something that you didn't need to be pushing against so hard so there'll be some muscles that are strong and some that are weak or some muscles that are fine and some that are too strong which relative to the other muscles means that comparatively they're too weak which is the same as having a weakness if something in your body becomes too strong, that's the same as having a weakness elsewhere because the body works in a way that is sort of like a pulley system. Is the, um, there's the pro, I think it's the, is the protagonist, antagonist. You've got one muscle that's doing uh, one thing and the other muscle's doing the opposite. To give you an example, the bicep pulls the elbow this way in towards the body and the tricep extends it outwards. The triceps on the opposite side agonist antagonist so you've got so they're opposites they do but they're both only pulling because that's all a muscle can do it contracts or pulls see yeah so that's why you get problem or dis dysfunction in the neck and the doctor would call it scoliosis well, what's he not doing telling you how it came Telling you how it formed. Well, it's, my, it's hereditary. What? How is it hereditary? It's a muscle imbalance. Unless it's an anatomical defect of the vertebrae of the spine. Or an unnaturally short ligament or something. It's postural. It's muscular. 
musculoskeletal. It's inferred by the category musculoskeletal. They relate to each other and affect each other directly. The skeletal system is, and I only know the basics, I only need to, is upheld by the muscles, is it not? When have you ever seen a skeleton stand up on its own? Okay, so the muscles lift up the bones. Okay, next point. So, more specific information. The guitar, I'm looking towards it. So what's happening? If I'm there for two hours during a gig, and I haven't done that, two hours. I haven't done that mo mo motion. Now I feel when I do that, it's pulling my shoulder, it's excessively pulling here. Why? Because it's resisting or shortening here. See that? Because this is all short. And what's going to happen? You're going to sort of belly out and things like that. The weakest part will give. So you might still be able to turn your head, but you're not doing it healthily. You might still be able to look over there, but you're not doing it in a way that is posturally sound. Oh, see the change in the sound of my voice? Oh, that should be the same all the way around. Oh, to a large extent. There might be some difference in the way it phonates because your head is tilted at a different angle. But largely it should remain the same, otherwise you've exposed a weakness or a dysfunction, a constriction of sorts. And so this, if this shoulder being lifted up doesn't ask the muscle to be long, what happens? Use it or lose it. I lose it. The muscle literally shortens up. I haven't asked it to be long, I've asked it to be short. So it can accommodate it. If I have my bicep like this, I'm going to tend to have a tightness in that bicep it's not fully contracted like i'm not lifting 15 kgs or something but i'm still in that position so for two hours the body says oh you don't need me long anymore okay i'll shorten it you go to do that then full extension oh there's a shortness there tight in the muscle the shortness right and over time that's going to feed in to the next structure so it has a knock-on effect your wrist being like that, well, what? so same principle all the way along the chain. Be known as a chain, like a links in the chain of movement. And they would be articulations along the chain. Like the way a chain can move, right? To accommodate a form or shape to go around the cogs that slot in between the links, okay? So then you have that chain of movement, okay? And articulations. Now, the articulations themselves are quite complex and you need um, to learn about those different mechanisms and how they, how they function but it doesn't take away from the simplicity of the principle the simplicity of the principle remains the same because it's a perfect principle the principle of movement in muscle so there you have it too short here where else would that might that shorten things? If your hand is there, it might shorten these, cause them to be overly tight. And you might find that when you go to display your hand, there's this, there's a more more of a pull along here, along the baby finger into the. It might have something to do with the way the processes and the bones link and things like that as well. And you have holding it in that posture then for so long and contraction. So, what do we have to do? We're for asking our body to do something we have to try to undo to the best of our ability the negative effects that that might bring so there's a consciousness of mind then you see if you haven't been trained in this way it's because somebody hasn't come alongside you in society and said we'll help you somebody who would be a master of the craft say look we're going to help you what do you want to be able to do well, well then we'll teach you how to do that properly Okay, I don't want to be a concert guitarist. Well, what do you require? Just to be able to accompany myself singing to a good proficient standard. Okay, well, let's get you doing that much right. And you see, if somebody cared about you, they would show you how to do that in a way that wouldn't hinder your main instrument. In my case, it was my voice. But they don't care. Society abandons you. It's sink or swim mentality in society now. Whereas before, if somebody was showing some signs of aptitude, 
it would be brought on. But it's sink or swim now in society. They don't care about you. Okay? So you have to you have to do the proper research in your own line of study. But what you'll notice is once you do some research and study into the principles, the basic principles of things, and you read the Bible, you'll understand that the Bible teaches the basic principle of things that run through all of creation. And so once you have the core principles, they can be applied outwardly to everything in the creation, every aspect, every form of study. Now, I have said to you that you would need a more close look at things to be an expert in a field. But you could, ha you could not offend something that you're not an expert at by applying the basic core principles rightly. And that's wisdom. Wisdom doesn't offend knowledge. But improper wisdom means that knowledge isn't rightly applied. So you can have all the knowledge about everything in the world. If you don't have proper wisdom, you can't rightly apply that knowledge. And that's why demons, despite all of their knowledge and enablements, will never properly apply that knowledge. They will always lead to harm because they don't have good wisdom. They have corrupt wisdom, evil wisdom or witchcraft. So when we do that, when we notice I was doing that wrong, just realizing it isn't going to immediately correct the physiological or the physical uh, limitations that that has taken years to uh, form in the body, those postural uh, malformations and, and dysfunctions. So that there's a tightness there in that shoulder that you have to keep present. And you don't let it hinder you. You don't let it become a burden. You just make it your routine. So, so you might notice in my head now, in my neck, that tilt. Right. Let's see if I can over, and I'm not putting that on. That's the way it is. Because if you notice, when my body appears to be straight, my head goes that way a little bit. You see that? Many people have little things like that, and you think, that person just has a head like that. No, they have a dysfunction. They have something in the chain of their, of their body that has become that way because of their line of work. Because of the thing they do every day, and they're not correcting it. Now, um, let's see if I can make an immediate improvement to that, okay, by addressing the core problem. So, I'm just going to, I can tell already this shoulder is very tight. Now, if I press on that, it doesn't have to be tough, and I'll tell you why. If you press something hard, your body says, oh, something hard's pressing. And that might even cause your muscles to spasm more because the body will say, resist that. Okay. But if you gently press that, then the body's reading that differently. The nerves are reading that differently, completely differently, if you gently press those muscles. Now the body is having a completely different response to what's occurring, even though you're still only pressing the muscles. Now, if you think this doesn't work, I'll give you live footage to prove it does. Watch. I'm going to lean over this side. Now, at the moment, that's with the weight of my head as far over as my head can go. Right? Now, watch. See that? Now what do I do? I check, I have a little feel around, and I check for the most tender. You know what I mean by tender? When you touch it, it feels, oh, it's a little bit raw. 
and then you press that one gently, find the most raw muscle, because that means that that's the muscle that's most impinging the movement at that time, limiting it, restricting it, stopping it. So you press that one, one, two, three, four, five. Can you remember where my head was sitting? Now, it's up here somewhere. So that's probably where the problem arises. That's probably the root of the problem right there. The occiput, where the muscles enter into the back of the skull. Why? Well, think about forward head posture. Which muscles are working the hardest now when you're in that posture? The ones that have to hold the head up. The core problem. So I can fix that one by leaning into that problem. Not in that way, but against it. Because remember, if I ask the muscles to be short, they'll shorten. If I ask them to be strong and short, they'll be strong and short. What will that do? Raise the chin. And then everything that has a knock-on effect as a result of being in that posture will occur over time. So I learn to move gently in an area of movement or motion or range that is new to me because like pressing on the muscle gently you're gently asking the body to accommodate if i ask the body to accommodate with great force the body will resist so satan and his kingdom know this that's why they do things gently that's why they make their presentations gently because they're trying to coax so that's that's the evil implementation the harmful implementation but the good implementation is that you can correct things drastically well with great uh, effect now do you see how my head has gone back up the muscles have somewhat set again when I put my head up like that because they do have to to contract to some extent but it shows that those muscles have learned to contract and stay contracted because when I reset my, my head they go back into that contracted position so what I need to teach them to do is move freely in, in the range so what do I do from time to time I do this now if somebody saw me on the bus doing this they said what's that guy doing <laughs> but just teaching the muscles to be able to let go when I ask them to. But I have to tell the body that's what I want it to do. Gently I have to tell it. Now I notice on this side particularly when, when I'm doing that compared to that, that has a tension that kind of goes down the back here and here when I do this side the tension is more focused on these muscles here. So there's a tension there and a tension here. Those tensions need attention. So what do we do? We ask them to let go. Sometimes you just need a little gentle press. You see? See how the evil, evil ones think? They use these things because they're gentle. So you might even be more inclined to go with somebody who appears gentle. They're only being gentle because they know that that gentleness has an effect, a natural effect. So they try to appear like light. The Bible says that Satan has the ability to appear as an angel of light. That makes him formidable. Because he can make presentations as though he cares and is good, but he's altogether the most evil entity in existence, beyond what even his own kingdom know about him. He's more evil than they have seen. But yet he can even appear as an angel of light. Do you see the point I'm making to you? Do you see now how you might notice, but isn't my posture better? Isn't my head sitting better? A little bit, isn't it? 
some of that might be actually the facial hair maybe not the course the beard isn't straight but it has actually improved as far as I can see the head is sitting more level see that there's still a little bit of a lean over that way see that it takes time because it's not only a matter of the muscles loosening and becoming relaxed it's actually a matter of the cerebral cortex drawing input from the peripheral nerves from the nerves involved in that posture and resetting them sending signals to the brain and then the brain resetting the posture so it's a marriage of things it's a marriage of a physical release an actual really practical physical release and then a, um, a recalibration of the input into the nervous system and into the brain that will realize that change and implement it neurologically so the, there's the neurological aspect and the physical muscular aspect and both of these aspects need to be retrained and recalibrated and you, I mean you can't avoid affecting the neurology neurology with you know you know with having affected the muscularity you understand so there's this musculoskeletal system but it's also connected to the neurological system and all systems work together at the same time and have a knock on effect to the next to the point where the cleanliness of your blood can depend upon the flexibility of a muscle. I said, what? Yeah, be uh, because not only that, but also the um, myofascial lines of the body. It's where there's fascia built to create this torquing tension to the muscle, which keeps it in place and functioning as it should. Kind of houses the muscle and then directs it, and directs its contraction and keeps everything in sort of good form and posture and holds it together well if that becomes too tight because of a shortening of muscle well then all those structures involved in that mo motion might actually tighten and become more constricted well that could have a negative knock-on effect to the lymphatic system which is the system that is there to clean the blood so now a shortening in the body is affecting the cleanliness of, of your blood or its ability to uh, be filtered by other systems lymph nodes glands lymph glands they're the sites around the body that I don't know exactly their function but they're involved in the lymphatic system I could research that so you see the point I'm making that something appears like it just has a head tilt, but that that can have so many more different knock on negative knock on effects. Like my little bit of a head posture or this little bit of a tilt can directly affect this over time because all of the structures, if the structures outside of the skull, the muscular structures outside of the skull are affected, how long before the ones inside the skull are affected? How long before they shorten? Well, then they have to be lengthened as well. So that when I do something like this, I can actually feel the tension up here. It feels, it feels like there's a stretch up here. You see what I'm saying to you? Because there's that knock-on effect, that ripple effect that moves through the entire musculoskeletal system. And that's why the importance of having a healthy foot to the rest of the functioning, to the functionality of the body instructs neurologically and otherwise the body's proper function along those different chains and different members throughout those members see when you try to move then in full range of motion that's how you can really test where the tensions are see how much better that is i used to be very restricted in that movement but now i've got much more free in that see that Now, there's still a little bit of a click when I get to about there, but I can continue to work on that.
that my rotator cuffs were injured. Sorry about that, were injured. So what should we train first? We should train mobility before we train strength. Strength, a, a degree of strength will come as a, as a result of improved mobility or um, range of motion, an increased range of motion, because you have to learn to be strong in that range in order to facilitate the movement. But then why would you ever compromise range of motion and mobility in range for strength unless you're inordinately focusing on strength? So you see that perfection is lost. But God's creation accommodated the sustaining of perfection. Like, for example, if, if you want to grab onto a branch and, uh, and hang out of it, you have to have enough um, strength or stability in the shoulder to maintain its posture whilst your body weight is on, on that on that region, being held up by that region there, across the shoulders. So now you're, in, just by hanging out of the branch, you're improving strength and flexibility and involving muscles in that process that you wouldn't use in everyday life. Stabilizing muscles, because you're having to stabilize your body to stop from swinging side to side, and that is mo moving those muscles. So now there's the begun to use those muscles and there's the neurological aspect as well that's being uh, made more intelligent it's getting more input which means it's more intelligent because it's receiving more information so to use the word intelligent in a, in a more encompassing way so intelligence can be you know just the reception of information receiving of information we're receiving intelligence, but just information. Okay, but it makes the function more intelligent in that it can do more, and that's the way the body works. The more information you give the body, the more it accommodates that, and that's not limited. The only thing that limits um, the reception of information or the receiving of information in range. Is a lack of flexibility and, and strength in motion. So we need to become strong at end of range. Like you might be strong here doing this, but then put put not the same weight. Whatever you do, don't get a heavy weight, the heaviest you can lift, and do a bicep curl and then put it out in front of you like that. It's a terrible idea. Okay, don't do that. But if you get a light weight, and then you do that with it, you'll notice that. The weight you can lift out at full extension is very different to the weight you can manage here because it's closer to your center of, of balance. You put that weight out there, now you're training strength at end of range. But I'm, I'm also training every muscle in that process or in that chain. So now I'm doing a more compound exercise because I'm targeting more areas requiring me to become stronger. But at the same time, I'm not in any way shortening the muscle, contracting the muscle in a way that asks my, my body to remain short. Like for example, if you held a barbell like that and you did an isom isometric movement like that, your muscles are, again, they're in a, in a contracted position and you're holding that position. So you're asking your muscle to learn to be contracted in that position. But if you do that, you're not asking your muscle to get stronger in a contracted position and you're actually strengthening the entire limb. Do you see the point? And what are you doing? You're building the strength where it's needed most first, the shoulder. Because I know from personal experience you can have big strong arms if your shoulder's not strong, how can you possibly use that arm? You can't effectively implement the strength in your bicep if your shoulder's injured. Why? Because the shoulder needs to stabilize the movement. So what do we need to do? Well, the Bible says, strengthen your weakened knees. But what do knees do? They accommodate walking. 
So I say to you, strengthen your wicked knees. And that goes for every accommodating joint of the body. Strengthen it in range of motion. Yeah. That's why swimming is such a good exercise. Why? It enables you to resist and move the body in a way, it presents resistance in all directions. Whereas air doesn't present the same degree of resistance. You understand? So when I'm standing in water, I can do this underwater. And now I'm presenting my body with resistance at angles that a gym couldn't. Unless they start to develop more, in, more intelligent equipment that enables you to resist in any direction you want to resist at. For example, if you had two grips, like that. If you had two things you could hold on to, and every way you moved them, they gave you resistance. Now you're resisting in directions. But you see, the problem is that you might be able to resist this way and a heavier weight than you can this way, but that's not important. I'll tell you it's not important. Why? Because if you can resist a weight this way and it's very heavy, but you, you don't have healthy shoulders, it's no use to you this, really. Because all you can do is lift the weight very heavy in that direction. It doesn't really accommodate the proper innervation and healthy strengthening of stabilizing muscles all the way around in every direction. You see? Whereas if you had some, some form of equipment that didn't just have you doing movements in straight lines like this or resist this way this way it does that chain or do this way it does that chain or do military press it does that chain i'm not uh, saying that this is like beneath me or anything like that i'm just saying that if you had something that could replicate the resistance of water that gave you the same freedom of movement or instructed you how to move upon every plane in order to target every range of motion and every muscle in that limb, just to learn a pattern. Well, then you would be you would come out with much more activated, better innervated, and healthier limbs all throughout your life. Because every way you resisted then, so like a hydraulics arm, you know, like the teleporters, something that is has integrity but presents a sort of a resistance no matter where you move it, but the same resistance on every plane and in every direction until you stabilize the shoulders. Then you just increase that resistance. Now you're talking because you can do your bicep curls in that movement. Now, to some extent, they can target this with the lines. You know the ropes they get? It gives you some extent. But if you... If you if you think about it, you're still resisting from one position because the, the line has to be tied to one point. But if you're not limited in that, yes, you could have something on a, even a ball and socket joint, so it would have to have one position as well. But by nature, it would present resistance because it would be like a mirroring of the limb itself. You understand? So something that would sort, you could wrap your hand around that operates and functions similar to an arm so that you could resist it. Now, to some degree, um, drills in martial arts present this because, you know, you, you go through a pattern and you resist that guy's movement and then he resists yours. And so to some extent, it's strengthening you in all your movements because there's a guy there meeting you, blocking you. And that's why karate is so good for your overall physiology. And you see guys like uh, on TV then that have this physiology that most men don't have. It's because they're not getting resistance in all directions. Well, spiritually, as we resist darkness in this world, we gain strength in all directions. Because the enemy comes at us like a constricting snake. And a constricting snake wraps all around. So that the enemy's resisting us actually strengthens us in all direction. They are coming against us to... Check the crack in the door there. There's a problem there. Do we see a little hole? Da -da -da. That's presenting resistance in all directions as we move. 
And so the mighty Lord of heaven is showing us that he is master, that he knows all things, that there is no match for him, and that his enemies, he can even use them for the better of those who would return to him in love. You see, everything physical can be applied to the spirit. So if you could come up with something that would give you resistance in every motion, and you could decide the motion at any moment, now there's much more people training much more of their body in a lesser space in the gym, and they can control the degree of resistance, maybe digitally. So that there's a machine being designed that can resist any movement you do. I don't know, maybe it's sprung, maybe it has cords, maybe maybe you could do a simple prototype that would use bungee cords or something. And so you could move it in every direction. Maybe it had bungee cords all the way wrapped around in every direction. You could do a simple mock-up or prototype of it. And then even if you went this way, the bungee cords would resist you. And if you went that way, they'd resist you. But they'd resist you to the same extent and degree all the way around because all the bungee cords would have the same level of tension because they'd be the same amount of material stretched over the same distance. But they would function in the opposite way that the muscles do, because the muscles do the same thing, except that the most resistance is straight up. So that if I'm lifting like this, the most resistance is there. If I'm lifting like this, the most resistance is there. If I'm lifting like that, the most resistance is there on the side. It's the highest point that is resisting against um, up. But if you have the same level of resistance in every range of motion, so I'm going this way and there's something resisting me that way. If I go this way, that's the most part of resistance. If I go that way, that's the most part of resistance. If I go that way, that's the most part of resistance. Why? Because the degree of resistance is greater than that which your weight produces. So that no matter what way your limb is going, you're, you're resisting to the same extent and degree. So that this is what Satan does. The nature of him being a snake provides resistance for us, the saints, in all directions. His intention is, I'll come at them from every direction. And the Lord says, I know you. Because he knows all things in, in advance. And the Lord is able to use his enemy's efforts to harm him for the betterment of those who would love him. In the same way that a machine that would give you resistance in every direction would probably be at the pinnacle of physical training in terms of technology and would best utilize the physics and the technologies available today. But something as simple as a bungee cord machine, so it might have a ball and joint function, at where it's joined to the machine, which might be a frame that goes all the way around you. So that would be that would need to be a big structure that could, like a like that a say a bench press machine would have to have because I mean it would have to be heavier than a big man could lift, right? <laughs> if he was to be allowed or enabled to use the machine too, maybe it would have to be bolted to the ground. But a lot of big men will tell you. They probably went through the process of learning, yes, I can get big, but I've got to train and stabilize the smaller articulations. They appear smaller, but they're integral to the movement. They're no less important. They're facilitating the movement. So therefore, you've got to take care of them. You've got to take care of the full range of movement of that joint, make sure that the limb can operate freely and function properly in all ranges available to it. And when I do that, I feel pain I feel around there, probably. So whatever that tells a physician. So you can still apply that principle. See the way I don't know the name of the thing, of the, but you can apply the, apply the principle. You see the point? So the Lord is teaching us core wisdom. If you can get core wisdom right because you're listening to the Lord, then you will avoid harm because wisdom was present when even God created the universe. Wisdom protects against harm.
Why do you think that most sports do arm swings and things like that first? Why do you think? You might have thought about it a lot. I'm just warming up. But what's it doing? How is it facilitating warming up? You're moving in all directions that the, that the arm can possibly go in, which warms up the muscles in every aspect of the joint and all of its structures. So you are just warming up. But if, if you can imagine, if, what if you could actually resist in that way both directions? What if you could make an arm swing an actual compound resistance exercise where you could become stronger and stronger in that full range of motion? Gaelic football won't offer you that. Swimming does to a larger extent because, again, you're resisting in all directions. So you see the men who are swimmers, their, their shoulders are developed in a way that is all around the shoulder joint in all directions. You see that they're, they're much more evenly developed all the way around the shoulder joint. Have you ever seen that? A boxer, to some extent too, but to a lesser extent, they tend to have more development on the front of the arm because that's where they're doing the motion. They might, you know, it depends on the individual boxer and his awareness and who's, who's trained them as well, who's taught them. So they say knowledge is power, but if you have wisdom, you can rightly apply even a small amount of knowledge where it's harmless. And shouldn't we first do no harm? Isn't that what the Hippocratic Oath says? I'm not promoting Hippocrates. But I'm saying that even in the medical field, they, they've known this. At least do no harm. If I'm here to help, I should definitely not hinder. At least. I should definitely not aggravate or make worse. That's not what this world does. This world promotes harm as being good. In the latter days, they will call evil good and good evil. They turned it on its head, guys. And they delight in your suffering they delight in it because they're the opposite to God God does not delight in the destruction of the wicked the Bible says are you starting to see your enemy now that they mean you harm now they protect for a little time their kings those who are pulling the slay and kill in the world those who are given the traction and the grounding but ultimately the Bible says evil must come to the world but woe to the ones to whom it comes woe to them. Because they're spearheading the event. They're enabling, enabling it to have influence and inflow into the world structures. Into the organs of state. That's why they want the removal of the head removed from the constitution. Why? Because they're getting postured to have a long prosperous life here. And that's part of the deal for doing all of the harm, bringing all the harm upon themselves and each other. So we see that Jesus doesn't mean you any harm. That Jesus doesn't mean anybody any harm. He's perfect. And he has perfect knowledge. He knows all his works throughout eternity. Perfect wisdom, perfect knowledge. And perfect knowledge needs perfect wisdom. They, they're inextricable, they can't be separated. Fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge is the understanding of the Holy One submitting to your head so that you can be instructed properly. Jesus is the head of every man. So they, the kings that pull the sleigh or the reindeers, the kings who reign, the deer kings who reign. Christmas is depicting of the mechanisms used in Satan's devouring of souls. You've got the Santa or Satan, it's an anagram of Satan, which is the big fat one with the the, uh, the, the sack, which his belly's full, isn't it? But he's been devouring, so he would have a full belly. Then you've got the sleigh that's the, the massacre, the killing, the slaughter that he's riding upon. And then he's got elves, the demons, making the presentations and the presents to lure man and 
gift man who made deals with man. Then you've got the reindeers, and this is the kings. Prancer, dasher, dancer. This is what they're doing. These are the acts they're doing in order to pull the kill in the world of dancing from side to side, of dodging, prancing, appearing like there's something there, and dashing, dashing. And so what's Santa saying? Whoa, prancer, whoa, dasher, whoa, dancer. Woe to those who bring the evil into the world. Satan's just repeating what the word says. Woe to them. Satan is Santa. Do you see it now? So they have a greater dispensation of, of knowledge and evil wisdom, but they're disconnected from the life of God so long as they're serving Satan. They don't have perfect knowledge. They're fattening their bellies and mitigating the immediate harmful effects of their harmful behavior so that they can have their 80 years or whatever it is with a relative uh, degree of ease of movement and this is in the interest of the of the santa who's driving the sleigh because he wants the sleigh to be pulled there's no love there it's a deal both are murderers in their hearts, going about their killing. You see? But you don't have to go after them. You don't have to be tricked by their demons who are making the presentations. You don't have to be drawn away to death. All they're doing is putting on a show. But God has protected your free will so that you won't be undone by anything they have in terms of authority or natural power. Because God's authority and natural power are greater. So the only way that you could be devoured is if you will be devoured. Notice what the Bible says. Satan has come down with great wrath, seeking whom he may devour. He has to be given permission. Who gives the permission? The one being devoured. They choose death. So I'm saying to you that don't be tricked by that. Don't be drawn into harming yourself. I mean, I went into gyms. I lifted weights that were too heavy for me to lift. I had bad posture. I trained poorly. I didn't train holistically. I didn't train every aspect of strength. I didn't train the antagonist and the agonist muscle. Only. And you know what? I was left to my own devices. Ah, let them bring harm on themselves. They don't care about us. They don't care about God's sheep. Or those in, the ones who in their eyes are likely God's sheep because they were unable to corrupt us. So they discard us like they're trash on the road. And so we kind of tumble in the world. <laughs> but the Lord keeps us as we're taking hits, but you know, the Lord knows because He keeps us in the Lord. But this tumbling makes us stronger to some extent. Because we have to you have to resist in the tumble. And you have to know what to protect in a tumble. Don't you? So you protect the vitals. And then what happens? You come to a point in your life where the Lord raises you up. He lifts you up. He opens your eyes. And so the trial and the enemy's escalated attempt to undo you becomes your discipline. It becomes your lesson then. And while we're going through that lesson, we're talking about it and exposing it to others in the world who might be looking for this and seeking this love of God that we have working in us, the light of the Lord. Amen. So basic fundamental knowledge when accompanied by wisdom is far better for you in preserving of life than the greatest dispensation of knowledge and no wisdom to accompany it. For a man to have it. Because obviously the, the greatest dispensation of knowledge must have wisdom or it couldn't be eternal and therefore it wouldn't be. So knowledge can only exist accompanied by perfect wisdom. Otherwise it's on the way to death. So we say come to life 
choose life, choose Jesus, he will restore, <gasps> excuse me, restore you to life. That means he will give you knowledge and wisdom so that you won't be lured away by death. Death is faith, faceless, featureless, uh, faithless. It's, there's no good there. It's obscurity. It's chaos. There's nothing in it. There's no form. Okay? So be saved. Come to Jesus. Be saved. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That's it. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised. He is our King, and He is sovereign. The Lord is mighty, He's our eleven then. Blessings.